people need to understand that images are, they're a different thing now. They're, they're as much a note, like it's a virtual note, right? It's a moment in time I took a note. I'm a photographer and I want to take art photographs, but when I go on holiday, I just take photographs like everybody else. And now I have Simon Fitzpatrick, who is the Senior Director of Product Management of Mobile Imaging at Xperia. Hi, Simon. How you doing? Nice to meet you. Nice to see you. Nice now, see you. I, I know you've been talking all about imaging here at Mobile World Congress. It seems to be one of the major trends here. So how to improve imaging, how to make the cameras better. What are the, the trends that you see here? I think what we're seeing now is um, we're starting to get closer and closer on the mobile phone camera towards you know, what the DSLR image has always done. Uh, there's always been a demand for fun features over the years, but it, when you boil it down to what people really want, they just want to be able to take good pictures. Uh, and I think some of the things that we're doing here with artificial intelligence and with computer vision have finally reached a level where we can make that more accessible for people. We can, we can help people create great images. Now, it's not going to get rid of photographers um, because there's always going to be a market for people who can really be creative with any medium. And in fact, if anything, I think it'll help photographers because the more images there are, the more the really good ones will stand out. From. Right. You've got to imagine that a camera, it's a representation of reality. It's not reality. Right. Actually, it's something that an engineer somewhere is interpreted as a reality because a camera sensor just sees gray, right? right? And it just interprets that in as a reality. So that's why we've got this continuous struggle to represent reality, but in a way that's almost ultra real, that you know makes you feel good, makes you feel happy. Because you know, when you look at a beautiful piece of work, art, whatever it is, you can never really put your finger on quite why right. you feel good. It's quite subjective in yeah, a way, it's right? Extremely subjective. What you may think is a great picture, I may not think so. Which is why like filters and those sort of beautification filters yeah. are really popular because everyone has their own opinion. Do you feel like that customization is also a major trend? Yeah, it's, it's a massive challenge for us actually because it, I mean, years ago we got into issues because we developed we developed the software in Ireland and we tested with you know Caucasian people in Ireland and mm -hmm. all all our detectors work really well with Caucasians but they didn't work with other Oh uh, I know uh, my my old camera was definitely racist exactly. <laughs> and, and, but that's the thing people say you know they automatically like, jump on racist actually it's not because there's a Chinese development team is developing it over there and they're not working so well on Caucasians it's, and that's a real challenge for us so the things we're doing with AI is enabling that because we're able to tell more about what the person is what their ethnicity is how old they are what what gender they are and that kind of enables us to deliver an experience which is much more geared towards the individual in the picture. But then also giving them the flexibility to, you know, to, to create their own looks and feels. And one of the things we want to do in the future is look trading and, and you know, making it really pop for people. Well, well, that's fascinating because it's also changing people's relationships with their photos. I mean, yeah. now my photos are an extension of who yeah. I am. Yeah. So that's why Instagram is so popular because all of my Instagram photos represent who I am yeah. as a person, yeah. right? So yeah. it's a more personal relationship. Very now. much so. And, and I think there's a, there's a, people need to understand that images are, they're a different thing now. They're, they're as much a note, like it's a virtual note, right? It's a moment in time I took a note. I'm a photographer and I want to take art photographs. But when I go on holiday, I just take photographs like everybody else, right? Yeah. Because I want to take notes. I was here, I had this experience. I want that experience captured in some way. Sure, I might try and be a bit more creative because I'm more used to trying to be creative. But ultimately, I'm just doing what everybody else does. I'm yeah. taking a note. And what about dual cameras? I feel like that's a major trend I've seen out on the show floor. Yeah, it, it opens up new possibilities for us, you know, because we now have a depth map. We have the possibility to see into an image as opposed to just a flat surface. And with that information, we can start to, you know, start working with the geometry of the face, maybe taking a little bit of, make you look a little bit slimmer, or, you know, or, or take those bags under the eyes a little bit better. But you don't, you know, the main thing is it has to be believable. Yeah. If you, if you see a representation of yourself and it just looks unbelievable, then, you know, nobody's, it's not credible. It's not credible to you. And when you show it to other people, they're going, oh, I don't know who that is because it's not you, right? Yeah. It's somebody else. So, but depth gives us that, but then we also need to look at what AI can give us, because AI can give us more of the features of the face. When you add that to depth, you start to really pull out individual components of the face, and then you can start individually dealing with that. 
but that's not enough in itself because in a mobile phone you have to you have the challenge of it's a battery powered device so you have to deliver all of that in such a way that the battery doesn't go flat in two right, minutes exactly. right so so it's not a simple matter i think there's always trade-offs we're going to have to make and Simon, I understand these trends. I understand enhancement. I understand the dual cameras. I understand better video. Explain this to me. I'm starting to see 3D imaging. Yes. What is the use case for something like that? Well, with 3D, there's all sorts of things you can do. So you can start, when you start to see a, a three, third dimension, you can start rendering that into a virtual world and you can start creating experience that extend beyond the real and into a virtual world. So that you've got augmented reality and virtual reality. So you can start to capture more of what's in a scene and you can render it. And if you, you're going back to a flat image later on, you can do more with that image. So you can almost recompose the image later on. Oh, I didn't like the angle on my face. I'm going to change it a little bit and do it over this way or over that way because that's my best side or whatever. So there's many different things you can start to think about delivering uh, with the idea that you have a depth map and you have three dimensions. Uh, and as I say, you can really kind of, we don't really know where VR is going to take us. I, no you know, I'm, I'm not a big fan of to have strapping something to my face. Yeah. But where I do like it is when I can see through that thing and look into the real world and start putting things over it. So we talk about mixed reality, being able to render virtual objects. And you know, we've started that with Pokemon Go, but we're going to extend beyond that into having things that can move in your real environment and fly behind an object and be rendered in such a way that you know that it's gone behind something and it sounds like it has, right? Because mm. that's, that's not a trivial thing. We take it for granted in the real world, but when you're trying to render it in a virtual world, it's not quite so easy. Well, I, I totally understand where these cameras are headed. Camera phones are becoming better and better and better. Will they ever replace DSLRs? That's a good question. Um, I, I'm a photographer, so I, yeah. I like to think no. And, and I'll say a few reasons why. Um, one is you're always going to want to put it in your pocket, which means there's physical limitations on what a camera can do, what a lens is, because ultimately, just as sound is about the movement of air, um, the capture of images is about being able to get light onto a, a surface that captures. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the lenses and the geometry of the lenses uh, plays a big role in that. And right. so having a big physical lens means you can capture more resolution, more detail onto the sensor surface. And a bigger sensor with bigger sensor sites also gives you the ability to do that with much better fidelity and much more real, realism and you have more options. So we can simulate that, we can approach that. I think we'll get damn close to it, but ultimately I'll, I'll, I'd like to think there'll always be a role for the SLR, but maybe that's the sentimental, sentimentalist in me, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. And you know, Simon, here we're tech the lead, which is play on words for take the lead. Yeah. So how does Xperia play into taking the lead in imaging? I think we've we've got a really exciting place now with, with the, with the, the the, the incorporation of DTS into the, the family, and we've got the Photonation guys and Invensas, we've now got pieces of a very complex puzzle uh, that we can bring together in a very exciting way. Because with Invensas, you've got this stackable semiconductor technology. Yes. We talked about oh, it being yes. so boring, oh, and it yes. is, but it's not. It, it is it's watching not paint dry, but you know what? The boring stuff is really important. You know, being able to do it with low power, really compact. Uh, is very important because ultimately the, the form factor we're all used to, the mobile phone, who knows, five years, maybe ten years, it'll be something you wear, you know, yeah. it'll be a pair of glasses with an imager in it. And so we're in a great position to help that happen because of the Invensas technology. And then with the Photonation technology, we've got the image processing architectures, and we've got the IPU hardware, which is uh, enabling you to do that with really low power. Nobody wants to wear a battery on their head that makes you do this, Exactly, right? even if it takes amazing photos. Exactly. Um, so you need to be able to miniaturize it, and, and it has to be small and fit into a small footprint. And then when you add to that the capture of sound and the rendering of sound in the real world and the virtual world together in an augmented way, so you've got three really important pieces to delivering a, a future, you know, and I'm, I'm really excited about where we are as a company. Um, I think bringing in DTS was the ultimate geek dream for me. As a Photonation guy, like I've got two hobbies, right? Photography and audio and, and listening to great music and watching great movies. You bring the two of those together and suddenly we're in a position to bring it out to the rest of the world yeah. and have other people do things and I think it's really exciting. And you've got it all covered. Yes, we all have it covered. Under one brand. Yes, it And is. in case you didn't notice, our uh, Tech the Lead booth has been dancing behind us. I know, so that's animation, <laughs> that's me, sorry. No, it's augmented reality, Augmented guys. reality, yes. So we're just gonna dance our way we out are, of this. We are, we're dancing out of here. Yeah. Thank you very Thanks, much. Thanks, Simon. Yeah, it's been a pleasure.